it, 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 it's an incredibly exciting time to be a libertarian. You know, it's, 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 one is always somewhat pessimistic. There's so many things about libertarianism that make one pessimistic about the future. We have all these theories about why the government inexorably is going to grow and take away more freedom over time. Um, and I think, uh, I think just uh, being here and seeing, seeing all of you in the audience uh, um, is something that, that suggests, that reminds us that there is something about this particular moment in the U.S. that is, is an unusually libertarian moment. And I, I want to reflect a little bit on, um, on what, why I think this is such a um, great moment for libertarianism and why we, have, for the first time uh, in, in perhaps 80 or 90 years, actually have a chance to move the country uh, back into uh, the direction of a classical liberalism of libertarian um, ideas and having a less intrusive government in both economic, um, economic and uh, social areas. Um, a great number of political debates get framed as debates about the future, but they often are also um, important debates about the past. And uh, we, we're in this, in this country at this time, we have a very important debate about this, the Great Recession that started in 2008 that uh, really has no end in sight. And, uh, and it's a debate about what caused it. And, uh, and then, you know, as you analyze that, you can sort of have debates about what might, uh, what might cure it. And I, I think it is, um, in some interesting ways, a counterpoint to uh, the debate in the 30s, which I think the libertarian side, the laissez-faire capitalist side, lost very badly, where uh, you had a debate about what caused the Depression. Um, and you know, fairly, unfairly, um, the, the blame sort of fell on the side that had been um, questioning government against government, and somehow the New Deal won, and it sort of kept building uh, on its victories in, uh, in the decades ahead. Um, and, uh, and I think there is a sort of very interesting way in which this current crisis gives us a chance to reevaluate um, uh, not just the history of recent years, but also the history of the last uh, century or two. I come at the question of what's been going on in uh, the U.S. and the world uh, from a perspective that's heavily driven uh, by, uh, by technology. I'm interested in a lot of other areas, but, uh, but I think the, uh, the question of technology is one that, uh, that, I've, um, that I've been very interested in. I've been, been involved in the, uh, in the computer internet revolution of, of the last uh, decade and a half, uh, and then more broadly have been uh, looking for you know, what are some other opportunities to invest in technology and how, how much of it has been happening, how well has it been going on. And, and one of the questions I've started to ask myself in, in recent years is this question about uh, how much technological progress is actually happening, and are we still living in a technologically accelerating civilization? Is it getting faster and faster? Um, is it uh, getting faster, or is it actually decelerating and, um, and uh, in some ways uh, slowing down a great deal? And the, uh, the, the basic conclusion that I've reached in, uh, in looking at uh, this is that um, outside of computers and the internet and maybe finance, we've had basically extremely little innovation for the last 40 years. And I want to sort of share a few of those conclusions and some thoughts on why and then some thoughts on uh, what can be done about it and how we can, how we can move forward. Uh, if you look at, uh, at almost everything impacting the real world, it's remarkable how little things have changed. If you looked at, uh, you know, the fashions people wear, they're not that different from what they would have been in 1990. If you look at the cars people drive, to first approximation, they look pretty similar. The planes people fly are similar. Um, ask the question, the most literal version of the question, are we moving faster? Um, the answer was, we moved faster every decade from 1500 onwards until uh, about 1980. It was faster sailing ships, faster railroads in the 19th century, faster cars, faster planes, culminating with the uh, Concorde in 76, which was decommissioned in 2003. And today, um, air travel is basically back to where they were in 1960, if you add in um, the very low-tech airport security measures that have been added. 